morning from the outskirts of Chicago. Um, we slept at a rest stop last night. It was really, really nice, kind of cozy. Um, it's been kind of cold. We don't have a furnace running, like I mentioned before. So we're just having to cuddle up in our sleeping bag and under all the blankets, and it, it's fine. At least there's no condensation that way. <laughs> For breakfast this morning, I'm doing reheats of yesterday, and because it's so cold, I could just leave them on the counter <laughs> and they're refrigerated, so that's great. So, we're gonna be frying up some stuff from last night. Ashley has informed me, like my sunglasses by the way, our uh, French friends from Ottawa gave us these. Very nice. Um, Ashley's informed me that because we're on a big trip and uh, we're traveling, uh, we have to go swimming despite the fact that it's May and uh, we're at Lake Michigan and it's probably going to be freezing. But you know, let's give it a shot. So I'm going to use this underwater housing and you guys are going to see what the underwater footage looks like on our new camera. Camera held up really good for the first chest. Really happy with this little guy. What a, nice, what a sweet purchase. I was a little worried because it was one of the cheaper options. There were more expensive ones. And they always say you should not get the cheapest option for underwater housings. But I mean, it's only a point and shoot, right? So like $300 seems like an appropriate amount of money to spend on a point and shoot underwater housing. Yeah, don't worry.
finally made it to Chicago, finally got some parking. We're uh, pretty far from downtown, so we're gonna bike in and uh, see the sights. We got a long, long list of things we wanna see, but we're gonna be here all week, so I'm really excited. Chicago's been on my bucket list for a long, long time. Just pumped. Okay. Because they put like pickles and tomatoes and all the hot stuff. Uh, all right, wicked. Well, I don't I'm know, down. But don't no ketchup. That's okay. really what I've been told. Because that's okay. how I eat mine, you know. Yeah. Canadians are all about the mustard and the ketchup, and you know maybe relish if you're feeling crazy. Yeah. Not even crazy, but like if you like relish. Sauerkraut and mustard's what's up yeah, for me. Sauerkraut. <laughs> all right, let's go. But yeah, no, no, can't do that here. Sit here. Alright. This is amazing. Nice, all dressed. It's all about those toppings. Oh, perfect. What did you just say? <laughs> It needs ketchup. <laughs> and I don't understand. All the silence I paid for living in peace. We had to be free. Unconscious roads we all take, and all the faults that we make. The singing birds on the lawn. Trying not to get old The fallen leaves for a man A custom without demand The only death won't betray The ashes will fade away look like much and in comparison to all the other buildings here it's quite small but this is one of the first high rises it's designed by Louis Sullivan back in the turn of the uh, 20th century and it was because of the elevator that made buildings like this possible before that you always wanted to have the bottom floor apartment or the bottom floor store but then once the uh, once the elevator became a thing penthouse baby that's where it's at so this is one of the first ones, and you can see he's very, very influenced from like Roman architecture. He's got the lines. Um, it started doing, I think this is before steel frame construction, so this is all stone and brick and wood and all kinds of other stuff, so. It's kind of a mess, kind of old. Not much to look at, but this is the start of skyscrapers. So this one actually didn't have an elevator originally because that's the year the Eiffel Tower opened, and that's where they unveiled the first public elevator. Those buildings probably have elevators, unlike ours.
Okay, quick architecture lesson. This is like part of a socialist movement in architecture where they believe they can make affordable housing in the downtown area of cities. But the real interesting bit is it looks like two pieces of corn cob. That's all you really need to remember. Corn cob. Okay. Corn? Corn, corn cob. Corn cob. I just bought myself a wicked little pouch so that I could use it on my motorbike and carry my cell phone or my camera and stuff. It's just, they get sweaty in my pants and this is all waterproof, so that's nice. Oh, <laughs> that's why you wanted it waterproof, not in case it rains. Well, yeah, because of the rain and also it's sweaty. Little, 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 although mine's a little crack, but I need to go. Yeah. Really I'm disgusting. Biscuit with uh, crap on it. That high school, and I eventually stopped by a Bang Bang for some American Pie, and to meet up with Ashley's friend Billy. Billy's gonna show us what's good. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Apparently not avocados though. It's got some hate on avocados. Yeah, they suck. What's up with it? Living is not easy, but living is good. So, you, so your impression of Chicago is? Montreal. It's Montreal? Yeah, even the river looks like that shade. Oh wow. Yeah. No one's speaking French though. Pourquoi <laughs> pas? <laughs> what is this place? Handlebar. Handlebar? So like a biker bar? Like a latexy kind of biker bar? <laughs> All right, wicked. Okay, so biker bar, dollar PBR. This is, we're having a real hipster night out for sure. I love it. Whatever. No denying it. I am a hipster. I'm down with it. If I have to be a hipster to enjoy free be cheap beer, then so be it. Yeah, free fries and wicked. It's like we're in Montreal again. Everything is like Montreal. Yeah. There you go. You know, when I heard it was a dollar beer, I thought they were gonna cheap out, but this is a, it's a real beer. <laughs> My god.